Hello, welcome back to the teachers. Um, it's time to uh, do another teacher commentary. There's quite a bit that we can say about teaching some of the things we have seen so far. So what I want to show you today is just um, one tool to help teach control flow. Um, control flow is one of these really fundamental concepts that you have to understand as a, as a beginning programmer. Uh, and that sometimes we, if we are familiar with programming, forget how hard it actually is to understand initially. It, it becomes so natural, so second nature that um, sometimes you know we don't really think about it very much. But understanding control flow initially for young learners can be um, one of the challenges. And I can I'll show you today how to use breakpoints and the debugger to illustrate control flow. And control flow, of course, um, becomes relevant with all control constructs constructs, for example, if statements, but also method calls, and then of course in loops, although we haven't seen loops yet, but in, in loops that will uh, of course become just as relevant again. But um, let's just first look at if statements and method calls. Okay, have a look. I have here the this bouncy ball example. So when I run this, I can put my balls in here by clicking. And um, I can show you um, control flow examples with both if statements and uh, method calls. Let's look at an if statement first. For example, here um, we have an if statement. So depending on what the value is of my alpha variable, I will get into one or the other of the branches of this if statement. And if we want to illustrate that to students, uh, we can set a breakpoint here. There is this area to the left of my code. And if I click here, that sets a breakpoint. So I have now a breakpoint here in that line in the change transparency method. So if I now execute my program, immediately as soon as we hit the breakpoint, and that is um, almost instantly after restarting this, this project because um, every one of those balls will execute this method every time at every act step. So in the first act step we are getting there. So here we are getting a debugger window popping up. Um, I can just make this a little bit bigger. Um, and execution stops. And here if we look at the editor, um, we see that we are stopped at this breakpoint now. It tells me here uh, at in the information area that I'm stopped at a breakpoint, I get this black arrow in here and I get this um, debugger window popping up. In the debugger window, I can see the values of all the variables. I have here static variables, that's my constant. I've got instance variables and I've got a local variable. The local variable is the one that I've just declared here in the line above. I have here declared my IMG variable and I see I've got it here and it's an object reference. Um, I've got the alpha variable here and I can't see it here at all as a local variable and that is because the highlighted line, the line that this arrow points to, has not yet been executed. So this variable has not been created. But I can now um, continue. Well, continue would just continue the running. I can step. If I step, um, I just go one step further here in my program. And so now um, I see that execution now as indicated by this arrow is in the next line. And I see now I have a variable here um, of type int called alpha and the current value is 142. So the transparency of this object that I'm looking at now is 142. And so I would expect you can now, essentially you can ask your students to predict uh, where we will go next. And alpha if it is greater than zero and it is, so we would, should go in here. So if I do a step now, I can see now we are going in here. And if I step again now, um, what will we expect? Where will we, will we go? We can try that out. And if step, and we see from here, we jump straight to the end of the method. So that is show just one step through an if statement. I can step again. And there we see we've just come out of the change transparency method and we are at the end of the act method. We can also. Um, observe control flow by looking at method calls. For example, here, if I set another breakpoint at the beginning of the act method, and then I say continue, if I say continue, execution will continue until I run into the next breakpoint. So I say continue, and now I am here, 
um, in the next act cycle or in the same act cycle in a different ball. So I'm at the beginning of an act method and I'm stopped before the call to my move method. Um, now I can either, if the next step is a method call, I can either use step or step into. If I use step, it executes this line as a single instruction and just goes one line down. So if I do step, it will go to the next line in my source code. If I use step into and there's a method call on that line, then I'm actually going into that method call and I will see uh, the execution line by line. So here I've got a method call for add world edge. If I say step into, then I'm stepping into the add world edge method and I am here. It shows me here um, the uh, the stack essentially what's called called sequence. So here I, ha I was in the act method and now I'm at the add world edge method. I can go back, I can select this and see um, where in the act method I was, where I came from and then the add world edge method was called. So that's on top of the stack now. Um, and that is where we are right now. And now I can watch the control flow through here by stepping through here and see, okay, that was obviously not true. That was not true either. And then there's another if else. And here I've got a case where I actually jumped into the else statement and I step and then I have returned here into the act method. So if I step again now, um, because the add world edge was false. I jumped over the if statement and I'm going there. And now I can either just step, which will just step over the change transparency in one go, or I can step into this. Okay, this is um, there. Actually, I was stopped at the next breakpoint because there's a breakpoint and we can go on observing this here. I can con remove my breakpoints by just clicking on them again and then say continue and then my execution will just continue as normal. Okay, that's enough. Play around with the debugger a bit. You can get the debugger up just by setting breakpoints anywhere in the code where you think there's an interesting bit of code and by single stepping through your code and watching your variables, you can get a lot of insight how the program works. Bye-bye.